Now that we talked about uh, Drude's theory and Ohm's law, uh, we can basically look at uh, AC conductivity in addition to DC conductivity. In order to talk about AC conductivity, we need to apply an AC field to the metal. So the electric field that we apply is of the form E0 e to the minus I omega t. So it's an oscillatory electric field. And the electrical force on the electron will be minus E, the charge of the electron, E0 e to the minus I omega t. So if we substitute this force into the equation of motion for electrons, we have m dv dt plus mv over tau, the collusion term. This is equal to minus e, e0 e to the minus i omega t, the force term. So the net force uh, is basically due to the, the, the net external force is due to the uh, oscillatory electric field that we apply. Now we assume that we have a solution uh, in the form v0 e to the minus i omega t for velocity. Uh, so it's an oscillatory velocity and the first derivative with respect to time will give us minus i omega so we will have uh, minus i omega plus 1 over tau parentheses times m v0 e to the minus i omega t equals to minus e e0 e to the minus i omega t e to the minus i omega t is cancel and we find v0 to be minus electron charge E0 electric field divided by m1 over tau minus i omega. So if I multiply this uh, by tau over tau, so this is multiplied by tau over tau, you will obtain m1 minus i omega tau in the denominator and tau in the numerator. So this will be our V0. Now the current density will be a minus NEV, so the electron conduction, electron concentration, electron charge times the velocity, so it will be minus, uh, so we have NE and for V, we have a minus E E0 tau over M1 minus I omega tau, so that will give us NE we have another e from v, so it will be an e square e0 tau over m1 minus i omega tau. So, uh, so this will give us uh, an e square tau over m1 minus i omega tau times e0 for the current density. Obviously, this is just the v0 term. Uh, we actually have here. Uh, an oscillation in the current, right? So we should add e to the minus i omega t here. So this will actually have an oscillatory current. Now, if we go to, uh, uh, if you look at the form here, it's going to be uh, j is equal to uh, sigma times the electric field. So this is basically using Ohm's law, the uh, AC uh, conductivity and e square over m uh, in parentheses 1 minus i omega tau so you can obviously see that if you substitute omega equals 0 here you will obtain the dc conductivity and e square tau over m or we can write the ac conductivity as sigma dc 1 minus uh, divided by 1 minus i omega tau so uh, we can play with this, we can multiply top and bottom with 1 plus i omega tau so that we will obtain in the denominator 1 plus omega square tau square. So in the numerator we will have sigma dc plus i sigma dc omega tau. So if you take this into sigma dc parentheses you will obtain 1 over 1 plus omega square tau square plus i omega tau divided by 1 plus omega square tau square. So what happens at high frequencies? At high frequencies, uh, first of all, we have a cancellation here. So uh, this omega tau, one of the omega taus is disappearing. 
Uh, so we have i divided by omega tau in the uh, imaginary part and 1 plus omega square tau square is going to be omega square tau square where omega tau is much greater than 1. So sigma ac will become sigma 0 which was an e square tau over m but we have a tau square in the first term in the denominator so that will take care of the tau in the uh, on top and then we have uh, an e square tau over m times i over omega tau the tau's will cancel so we will find an e square over m omega square tau there's one remaining tau uh, plus i n e square over omega m now the uh, omega square will be much greater than omega so this uh, the first part will go to zero so we will have a purely imaginary uh, uh, AC conductivity I N E square over omega M as omega goes to zero. So at high frequencies we find that sigma AC becomes independent of tau and the imaginary part will dominate. Now instead of talking about the AC conductivity it may be more convenient to ex express this result as a complex dielectric constant. Now having this discussion in terms of the dielectric constant rather than the conductivity uh, proceeds as follows so we, you can think about the displacement of an electron from a reference ion so we have a reference ion here the electron has been displaced uh, to a certain distance uh, delta r from this ion creating an electric dipole so you can see that uh, the polarization is defined as the dipole moment per volume which is uh, the charge multiplied by the distance between uh, the two uh, equal and opposite charges divided by the volume so that is basically equal to minus the electron concentration electron charge times delta r the displacement from the ion so this is our uh, polarization so we have uh, the equation of motion m dv dt plus mv over tau collusion term is equal to minus e times the electric field but here the velocity of the electron is the change of displacement change of position with time d delta r dt so we can re rewrite this equation of motion as second derivative uh, of the displacement plus one over tau uh, first derivative of the displacement uh, times m is equal to minus e e t so we're substituting here v is equal to d delta r r d t so this uh, basically we have the same assumption here the displacement will be oscillatory it will be delta r zero e to the minus i omega t and uh, now if i take the second derivative with respect to time of delta r i will obtain minus i omega minus i omega it will become plus i square omega square which is minus omega square and then i have the first derivative which is minus i omega so then i have minus omega square minus i omega over tau in parentheses m times delta r of t this is equal to minus e times the electric field uh, the minus sign cancels so i find that delta r of t is the electron charge E times electric field divided by M omega square plus I omega over tau. So this is our tau. So uh, the polarization as we have discussed at the beginning is minus N E times delta R the, the distance between charges. So minus the electron concentration E and for delta r i substitute e electric field so it becomes minus an e square electric field divided by m omega square plus i omega over tau now how do i get the complex dielectric constant from here here i have to remind you some basics from electromagnetism course polarization is related to the electric field that creates it by electrical susceptibility polarization is chi e times e the electric displacement which describes the overall effect of electric field and polarization is given by epsilon zero e plus p epsilon zero is permittivity of free space so 
substituting for polarization electrical susceptibility times electric field I obtain D is equal to epsilon 0 E plus chi E times E so epsilon 0 plus chi E times electric field which is uh, related to the electric field by the dielectric constant epsilon times E and the dielectric constant is relative uh, permittivity multiplied by permittivity of free space times electric field so you can see that epsilon 0 plus chi is actually epsilon the permittivity and therefore chi is epsilon minus epsilon 0 so if I substitute for polarization equals chi electric field epsilon minus epsilon 0 times electric field I see that epsilon the permittivity or the dielectric constant is polarization divided by electric field plus epsilon zero this is in SI units in CGS units it's modified as uh, epsilon zero is uh, is one in CGS and then we have a factor of four pi so the, the, the complex dielectric constant is one plus four pi polarization divided by electric field in CGS units okay so if I substitute for polarization the result I obtained here minus an e square electric field divided by m omega square plus i omega over tau uh, I will obtain epsilon equals 1 plus uh, 4 pi so there is the 4 pi here and then n e square uh, because I'm going to divide it by electric field e disappears divided by m omega square plus i omega over tau um, or we can uh, rewrite this in uh, omega square parentheses as uh, 1 minus 4 pi n e square over m omega square 1 plus i over omega tau so that so this is dielectric constant of a free electron gas now I multiply uh, top and bottom uh, with uh, tau here so this is what I'm doing here I'm multiplying uh, top and bottom with tau uh, for this term uh, so this is going to become 4 pi n e square tau divided by m omega square tau plus i omega m i omega because the um, tau disappears so uh, n e square tau over m so this term is our sigma 0 the DC conductivity so it is 1 minus 4 pi sigma 0 divided by omega parentheses i plus omega tau if I multiply top and bottom with omega tau minus i I will obtain omega square tau square plus 1 in the denominator and then uh, I will obtain minus 4 pi sigma 0 omega tau and plus i 4 pi sigma 0 and you can see that in the first term the omegas cancel uh, and I obtain this general expression for uh, the complex dielectric constant now what happens if omega tau is much greater than 1 if omega tau is much greater than 1 these two terms will have omega square tau square uh, dominate so we will have for the first term minus 4 pi sigma 0 tau over omega square tau square and one of the tau's will cancel in the second term I will have i4 pi sigma 0 divided by omega cube tau square because omega square tau square is much greater than 1 1 is ignored and since omega cube is greater than omega square and as omega goes to infinity this term will disappear so I will find this is has the form 1 minus omega p square over omega square where omega p square is uh, 4 pi sigma 0 which is 4 pi uh, sigma 0 over tau or 4 pi n e square over m n e square tau over m was sigma 0 there is a tau in the denominator so that tau disappears this is called plasma frequency uh, which will become clear in a second now I find that the in the high frequency limit the permittivity the dielectric constant is 1 minus omega p square over omega square now what happens if omega is less than omega p if omega is less than omega p uh, then I will have epsilon negative so epsilon is negative that means from Maxwell's equations it can be shown that this will imply electric field decays exponentially no radiation can penetrate 
if omega, the frequency that I'm applying, is greater than the plasma, plasma frequency, omega p, then epsilon will become positive, electric field becomes oscillatory, the metal is transparent, and transparent to this electric field. When omega is equal to omega p, what happens is that uh, epsilon goes to zero, that means we have collective surface electron oscillations that are called plasmons. So that's why this frequency is called the plasma frequency. It corresponds to the plasmons, the collective surface electron oscillations. There is another limit. What happens if omega tau is much less than 1? If omega tau is much less than 1, then we will have uh, epsilon imaginary. So uh, you can see that when omega tau is much less than 1, uh, there will be a remaining uh, imaginary term here, so it's going to be imaginary, it will be a complex number. That means the radiation cannot penetrate, the skin depth is very small. Okay, so we have gone through the exercise for the, uh, the problem of applying an AC electric field. We have seen that there are uh, three possible outcomes. The metal can be transparent to the electric field. Uh, the, the, the electric field may not be able to penetrate the metal or it may only cause surface electron oscillations that we call plasmons. And this analysis is based on, again, Drude's model uh, where we write the equation of motion uh, and for the force term we, we use the uh, AC electric field and we assume that the solutions have the same uh, oscillatory form. So we have done this uh, using the uh, velocity in the equation of motion where we have directly obtained AC conductivity in the form sigma dc divided by 1 minus i omega tau. And we have shown that at high frequencies sigma AC is independent of tau and the imaginary part will dominate. We have gone through the same exercise assuming uh, in terms of polarization, so we, we're talking about displacement of the electron, so velocity is replaced by a rate of change of uh, position, the d delta r dt, and that gave us uh, for the uh, dielectric constant uh, a complex uh, form, and we have seen that by looking at the three different cases, uh, there is a critical frequency called the plasma frequency, which is 4 pi n e square over m. This is using CGS units, uh, for which when the, uh, the oscillation frequency is less than the plasmon frequency, the electric field decays exponentially. When the oscillation frequency is greater than the uh, plasmon frequency, uh, the metal is transparent. And when the oscillation frequency is equal to the uh, plasmon frequency, we have collective surface oscillations. And for the low frequency limit, epsilon is imaginary and radiation cannot penetrate.